former church planter, I would like to salute all the missionaries, former missionaries, and future missionaries, especially the very future missionary who would like to join Brother Bobong in Malaysia. Sadly, Brother Bobong, walang forever. I think that is not for me. I bring greetings from the Philippine Baptist Theological Seminary, the most trusted, preferred, in Gisad Valley, Baguio City. In Gisad. <laughs> but of course, in Asia and the Pacific. And it is indeed a privilege to minister to you and to share with you the theme for tonight. But there is no slide, so... We would like to call Brother Bobong to lead us again. All right. I bring greetings from PBTS. So here is how we involve ourselves in mission. You can see the water tank in PBTS. And that is a reminder that we have to keep sharing the living water. And many are having their pictures in this place. And that's for 10 pesos each. You know. Also, we have... How do you... May, may nagsasabutahe. Ikaw na lang o ako. Alright. When you see this, that's to change channel. Alright? Okay. We also would like to honor missionaries who died in service. And so we made this beautiful uh, piano fountain uh, going to the music department of PBTS, the Yun Sok Choi uh, piano fountain as a sort of memorial to her service because she died while practicing for the next two uh, recitals of our music major students. We also have right now the presidential bonfire. And this is a new area where you would like to enjoy at PPTS. And you can see the eight hands. Those represent a seat for every president of PBTS. And the truth is, I just want to avoid the erosion of the soil at this back, right? At this area. So I used to create that bonfire because we simply burn our trash in that area. But now, it is a place where you can have your own president. No, you can sit right there. So at, at the foundation, you can see the name of its president. And that's worth $800 each. They see Dr. Sauri Bayad Nayan. President Nas gave $828 for the project. And so I think we all already covered that. That's one of the things that you need to visit at PBTS. We also have the new building at PBTS. And we are excited to have the PBTS Bahay ng, Bahay ng PBTS, ABGTS alumni. And now it is 25%. All right, you can see that. We have 25% completion of the project. And we are pre-selling at 1,000 pesos for two. No? Overnight. Yeah, 1,000 lang. And that is $23 if you are 
maraming dollars, of course. If this is transferable. When it is operational, the, build, uh, the, the cost for night for two persons is probably 2,500 pesos. So it's a 15 new guest units. And hopefully, if the weather will cooperate, we will have the new building for the January 2017 Lightwalker Bible Conference. The money, the money is there. We have covered the money for the building, but of course, when you buy, then we will make uh, money for the interior of that building. But we praise God for that opportunity. It is located near the open basketball court, the old married apartment, and beside the PBTS canteen. I would like also to invite you for the PBTS 48 Lightwalker Bible Conference. It is an all-Filipino Bible conference, meaning we have the Filipino Southern Baptist Ministries of California who will go with us, and they will be the speakers. Lahat Filipino na merong dulyar. Because I told them, you cannot come as a speaker if you will not bring at least two balikbayan boxes for the pastors. So they are now ready with some 200 backpack with ISOD t-shirt and DLPs. And we would like also to give uh, acetate uh, projector if you want. The big ones. No? We would like to have Kindle and laptops. All of this is for that coming Lightwalker. Also, we will not increase the, the registration. No? So do not ask for a buffet because it's 2,500 or 3,000 here. But there it's 600. You have 75 for your meal budget. Don't complain anymore. Huh? Just come. The team is disciples making disciples. I would like also to invite all other facilitators for the summit. This is the fourth PBTS Seminary Education by Extension Summit. Sorry, but this is by invitation only. Those who want to start an SEE or facilitators. Our second enrollment or semester is on October 13. And then we have a new conference this coming October 12 to 14. If you have a kid, pastor's kid, please bring them to the amazing pastor's kids conference. October 12, 13 to 14. So ipadala ninyo ang inyong mga anak na pastor, pasaway man o hindi, para sila may makabahagi sa conference na ito. And so those are some of the newest news in uh, PBTS. Last night, the Federation President focused on strategizing and mission. And the challenge was focused on that particular words like comply, compliance. And we know that ISO is one of those terms you know, the International Standard Operation or Certified Company, I can say that the sermon last night with regards to that is in strategizing. No? is saying, dapat okay tayo. Alright? But when you see this, <laughs> you have to put down your finger also there. Alright? Okay. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Practice lang. <laughs> Yeah, okay na. Mahirap ito. Hindi, hindi pa ba pwede? Hindi, wala talaga. Naubos na sir eh. So he, he is saying, in strategizing, no, the fe Federation President has his own. Dr. Saure, we should buy our own. <laughs> our own remote. But you know, we are far better here in the Philippines. Because in, in, in the U.S., they don't even have this. They don't use this. They don't use PowerPoint too. Because it's only 15 minutes. Ready? All right. So, he's saying that on the first night in... Atras lang ito, sir, forward. In strategizing, the churches must be ready and must be compliant, particularly to the Word of God. Now, may I ask, what if, what if we would try the other 
way of strategizing. Yung uso ba? No? And we have that one. I think the this one is also not working. So, <laughs> wag na lang. Wala pa? Ayan. What about if we try another strategy like the uso? Ayan. And I can say the ubusan strategy na lang tayo. No? Well, what about ISO, ISO? USO tayo. What if? Oh, sasabihin sa atin eh, what if this is not really working? We should go back to the daliri. Oh, yan na, no? Ito na yung mga ubusan. What if this is the kind of strategies that you are asking? Nasa kanila. Balik mo lang. What about? Ayan. Let us all stand and pray. This is the curse of technology. What if kung itong strategy? Kayong mga SB churches, kapag hindi kayo nag-join hand in hand sa Global Mission, papatayin ko kayo. Believe me, I will kill you. What if that is the kind of strategy that we want? And of course, this bato, eh, nagmana lang naman dito sa, sa, kanyang, sa kanyang boss. Oh, totoo yan. Pag di kayo nag-strategize at join hand, mga SB kayo, papatayin ko rin kayo. Do you like this kind of strategy? Are we going to listen this kind of strategy? What if? But the point of the first message is that we need to strategize. We've been in the ministry. We've been uh, having these churches for so long, but we have to strategize. And we, ha- we don't have to resort to this kind. And so, the president, Emeritus of PBTS, on the second night, focus on mission language responses in a Trinitarian fashion. The three Ps. Prayer, peso, and presence. Knowing Dr. Sauri, he focused mostly on that peso. Kaperahan. Admit it or not, that's what we need to keep on doing in our church. Pera. Kaperahan. Sadly, I have a bad news for you, Dr. Sauri. I activated my weather station and so here is the tightening forecast. As of today, based on the canonized weather station, tightening was estimated at only 8%, with maximum sustained giving of 120 titers per 500 members near the center of the altar, and gustiness of up to 150 members near the general direction of the target monthly giving. It is forecast, however, to move to 200 members in the coming days. But, the offering sections from love gift to mission and to other offerings are experiencing mostly cloudy skies with scattered giving and sometimes tighter storms. But you, you observe it last night that the rest of the giving will be partly cloudy to cloudy with isolated special offerings like returning of love gift by preachers to missions organizations. That's what you mentioned last night. In its recent bulletin, the canonized weather station noted a low pressure on allowance, LPA, and is estimated among 50 churches, while an active low pressure on allowance, ALPA, was estimated at 30 churches. The low pressure on allowance is embedded along the inter convergence zone, <laughs> affecting the church general funds. Titers near the coastal waters throughout the archipelago would be slight to moderate except during tighter storms. Low tides during 4, 11, 18, 25 Sundays. High tides during 5, 15, 20, and 30 Sundays. Yeah. 
and tithing will shine when parishioners are reminded, and tithing will be forgotten when reminders are absent. In the coming days, however, floods of giving are seen as a result of malahabagat sermons on giving. This is your tithe forecaster saying, tithing is weather, weather then. That's the bad news, Dr. Saure. But if you will ask me, what can I say about giving in mission? Isa lang. Ibigay mo na. <laughs> Ibigay mo na. Andyan lang eh. The problem is, we do not probably learn proper stewardship. That's why, when we talk about strategizing, when we talk about churches joining hand in hand, in hand for global missions, what I can say is that, well, maybe it's showtime churches. You see, I'm the youngest among the speakers, and I'm the most obedient. Because I use their texts in the sermon. They use different texts, but it is unfair if you will not listen to Ephesians chapter 3, 1 to 10. But I add 1 to 9. I don't know about this uh, organizer, why they give us assignment, just one verse when we are trained into doing expository sermon. Maybe nagtitipid sa tarpaulin. But let me tell you, churches, it's showtime. And I'm also using the New King James Version. Although I am a NASB pastor. NASB because necessary as Southern Baptist. But the King James, New King James said to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church, by the church, to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Well, NASB is good, but not in verse 3, especially Ephesians chapter 3. Because Paul says that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. Hindi ko alam kung nakabrief siya o sa brief niya sinulat. That's why the problem is the use of NASB. So, New King James ka na lang. This is my contention. Somebody told me, Dr. Kanoy, if you will buy a new car as service, you must buy the great one. Because you are a great institution, PBTS. I'm only a church. I cannot rebuke lovely the pastor. But what he said is not my personal conviction. PBTS is an institution, a great institution. But let me tell you, the church is the greatest institution on earth. Better than all other organizations and institutions. Kaya Montero na lang bilhin ko. Kasi gusto niya, matas, pwede rin sana. But let me tell you this, the local church versus all organizations of the world. Wala silang pamana sa local church. Look at the recent Rio 2016 Olympic. The, the theme is leave your passion. But we already have the passion of the Christ. We already have that as a church. That is our banner cry. That is our rallying theme. That is where we work together behind because of this passion of the Christ. Also, in other Companies like Microsoft, they said, we believe in what people make possible. For so many times, for so many years, for nothing is impossible with God. This is the churches, the local churches versus all organizations like what you have there, the Apple. I use Samsung, not Apple, because I believe that all Apple products are secondhand. May kagat na may kagat na And I use Samsung because it's biblical, you know? Samsung and Delilah. <laughs> it's biblical. But when you compare the local churches versus all organizations of the world, the, the Apple says, think different. Oh, we've been saying that before in the churches. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this word, but be transformed. Being transformed is to think different, to influence those who are worldly. And so the local church, I believe, versus all these organizations are greater, greater, much greater. Coke 
said, have a Coke and smile because Coke adds life. Adds. It doesn't say Coke is life. It only adds life. Because if you're diabetic, unti-unti lang ang putol niyan. It, it adds. And by the way, I noticed there are so many senior citizens tonight. Let me give, as a doctor, I have a prescription for you. Especially those who have gout and rayuma. Just simply cut malunggay branch. Sanga ng malunggay. Huwag nyo ilalaga. Iyon po yung tungkod nyo. Iyon na yan. Iyon na yan. Iyon ang gamot doon. Tungkore mo. That's your cane. And so, these corporate organizations, do not be impressed with them. Be impressed with your own local church. Because the local church versus all organizations of the world, we can say with Bill Hybels, the local church is the hope of the world. Not Duterte, not Trump or Clinton, it is the local church. This is the intent of the text. That's why verse 10 said, To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church in ASB through the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. You see, there is that sense of splendor in mission of the local church, if you cannot see it. But if you would like to see it closer, there is some sort of intergalactic or interplanetary or extraterrestrial mission here. A kind of beyond an outer space mission. It is a vast mission indeed. So encouraging because this mission can only be accomplished through the church. This is what the text says. Through the church. And so, sometimes our problem is we simply listen to the others. Look at the church. The church is very healthy. We should follow what we are doing. We should copy what we are doing. That is also wrong. You have also your own context. But the truth is, through you, through your church, God can use you. That praise, let me remind you. I look at it in many commentaries and even uh, what do you call that? Commentaries, dictionaries, accordion, <laughs> concordance, concordance, concordance. I look at the praise through the church. And I was surprised it cannot be found in other New Testament books. That this verse, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, is telling us that by its very existence, the church is called and equipped to be the theater of God's word. That's why the title of the message is, It's Showtime. Hindi it bulaga ito, mga kapatid. Well, it can be churches. It bulaga kung nabulaga ka na ganito pala ang dapat na role ng local church. Showtime. You have to display something here. And so, what are those? Number one, you can have your outline in the book. It says, sorry for a very tripty outline. That's real an outline. Local church, you have something to show to the principalities and powers. Principalities and powers done to the Secretary General of the United Nations. We regard the United Nations as a high body, a, a powerful body. But let me tell you this. The local church is larger than the United Nations. How could I say that? Well, I look at the website, of course, and realize that our global missions is larger than the missions of the United Nations. I look at their primary objectives as United Nations. They say, we are here to maintain international peace and security. Oh, churches, look, you have to make every effort to live in peace with everyone. And there is an additional end to be holy. 
I would be impressed with United Nations. They will say, maintain international peace and security and be holy. But this is only given to the local church to be holy. And if the United Nations want to make a war with a Pasaway na country, they will bomb that country. But the churches, you have your deacons as your, as your enemy. The Bible says, love your enemy. This is far greater than the United Nations goal. Another goal of the United Nations is to promote sustainable development. So you see, the Bible says to the churches, cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. Sometimes we think that by giving this and this to the people in the community so that they will come to church is enough. That's wrong. There was this new missionary with the IMB in the early time that they came here. They came to Romblon. No, no, no. Mindoro. Oriental Mindoro. Pinamalaya. On the first worship service, there was Lechon. Of course, everybody would come. The next Sunday, no more Lechon. No more people. It's not the way it is, as we realize. But look at the UN. They promote sustainable development. We also promote that. The United Nations says, we are protecting human rights. Oh, Proverbs 31, 8, 9 says, open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. It has been there. It is for the churches. I don't know if I will be happy with Brother Bobo sharing that I pray for the patient and she died. But normally, some of those who would like miracles are for a show also. There was this man in a wheelchair. And when the preacher came, the preacher said, All right, would you like to see miracles in Jesus' name? Yeah. Yeah. All right, stand up. The man stood. The people clapped. They said, walk. And then he walked. And the people jumped for jump because the man is walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Until he fell down. <laughs> and they realized the man was blind. But the charge to the churches, you know, not only to do miracles, but to get involved in society and look for these people and defend the rights also in the name of the Lord. The United Nations also say, we are upholding international law. Oh, why? The churches? What about the churches? We have been told that we too must be subject to existing authorities. And more than that, Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And most of the time, most of the time, we realize that we can simply forgive those, you know, who are doing bad against us because we have a higher law. Dr. Sauri once mentioned to us during our ethics subject that, you know, it's no longer the what's that? If you do not like what the government is doing, the term is, you have the right for civil disobedience. Well, let me say civil disobedience, that's still disobedience. And so we, he coined the term, higher obedience. It must be higher obedience. I would rather obey God than men. And so we also uphold laws. If you are going to say that UN is greater, the churches has a larger mission. And I think they also said, we are delivering humanitarian aid. I don't know if it is coincidence today is World Humanitarian Day. You see what the churches are doing since then? Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. 
and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You look at the United Nations, they can only deliver humanitarian aid. Those, those who appeal to the senses, to the minds, to the body, to the hunger most especially. But the God of peace tells us you have to take care of the whole person. Spirit, soul, and body. Therefore, I can say compared to the church of Jesus Christ, the United Nations is like a whale in the ocean wherein the ocean is represented by the church. And that the mission of the United Nations compared to the mission of the church is like a kindergarten school versus a postgraduate program. If you believe what was written in the book. The reason being is that the gates of Hades, the powers of death, will prevail against the United Nations and all other institutions in this world but the local church. That's why Bill Hybels keep on sounding the bell. The local church is the hope of the world. The local church is the hope of the world. And we want to rely on some material things, keep on asking for material things just to make our church going and going and going. The gates of Hades will not prevail to local churches. Somebody is waiting, but who are the principalities and powers wherein we have to show what we got? Churches. One may easily conclude they, they were angels because they were in the heavenly places. However, when you look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the, 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 it also said that Satan's cohorts, angels, were in the heavenly places too because they were spirits. Yung spatial dimensions, wala, wala naman sila. Oh, dito ka lang. No. So, more, many believe, many believe that the principalities and powers of Ephesians 3, verse 10 are supernatural hosts in alliance with Satan. In that case, these are the beings to whom the church is to demonstrate the manifold wisdom of God. Show churches to these principalities and powers that we are greater than all these organizations. You can say, hey, devil, I have the only weapon that can stop you. You know that? And guess what? It's fully loaded. It's the Bible. We have it. The Word of God. You see, the problem is many churches are being demonized by these principalities and powers. During the time of Ezekiel, God looked for someone and He sees no one. That's why I look for someone to stand the gap, but I found no one. Because during that time, there was a religious, political, ethical, moral bankruptcy. And it was even it was even mentioned that even the parrots don't have moral bankruptcy. Sabi itong isang babae one time, Father, I have a problem. I only have two female parrots, but they only say one thing. What? What do they say? Hey, we are prostitutes. Would you like to have some fun? These parrots keep on saying that. Every time they will see people, hey, we are prostitutes. Would you like to have some fun? And so father said, there's a big problem. But anyway, bring your two female parrots into my house. I have two male parrots who I teach how to pray, how to pray the rosary, how to read the Bible. My parrots will teach your parrots how to behave. And so the next morning, the female parrots were brought to the father's house. And right there, when... When father put these parrots, female parrots, what do they normally say? Hey, we are prostitutes. Would you like to have some fun? And the two male parrots are praying the rosary and reading the Bible. And so one of them said, Hey brother, put down the Bible and the rosary. Our prayers are answered. <laughs> If in case, if in case, that will be the case in your church, that there is that sort of ethical bankruptcy that even your pets, you know, are saying bad words. 
the devil is right there and very active telling you this church has no power at all. This has nothing to demonstrate to us. That's why, that's why when, when, when Baptists meet those demons, they are afraid to cast out demons. Unlike the Pentecostals. When they see a sister probably having a fever, nilalagnat lang, o natrangkaso lang, you're being demon-possessed. Because they are Pentecostals. And so they will cast out the demons. Oh, in Jesus' name, get out, get out, in Jesus' name, get out. Get out in Jesus' name, Jesus, get out, Jesus, get out, Jesus. But this Jesus, pinapalayas. No, 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 no. Not you, Jesus. Come back, come back. Pinabalik pa. Let me tell you this. Dine demonyo ba ang inyong iglesia? Ipakita mo sa demonyong yan na taglay mo ang katotohanan kahit ang kanyang pinakamabagsik na kadimonyohan ay hindi na kayang demonyohin kailanman ang iyong iglesia. If you will believe the truth that through the church you hold that key and telling them, Hey! All of you are losers. Pero normally, hindi naman po yan nasa mga heavenly places yung mga nandidemonyo sa church. Minsan katabi niya lang. <laughs> local church, you have something to show to the principalities and powers. Secondly, local church, you have to show the manifold wisdom which was revealed to you because it is no longer a secret. In verse 10, it says that the magnificent task of the church is to display before the hosts of heaven the manifold wisdom of God which is beyond United Nations power. Displaying the wisdom of God not with the human beings but to the supernatural beings. And so what happens here, in Revel- the, when you look at chapter 3 verses 1 to 7, you can see there the revelation received by Paul from God. In verse 3, it was mentioned the mystery known by revelation. In verse 4, that mystery was called the mystery of Christ. And in verse 5, in what sense it becomes mysterious? The mysteriosity. And on verse 6, the content of the mystery, therefore, it is no longer a secret. And so, what we are saying here, the truth of the matter is that the manifold wisdom of God that is being shared is that we, the church, was purchased with blood. In other words, when you look at verse 6, this is what happened. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow ears and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's why wala na nga tayong gustong gawin, kundi mag-fellowship na lang na mag-fellowship. Dahil may fellow ears tayo, fellow members, fellow partakers. Fellow. This is the secret. And it is now revealed to us. The second thing on that verse is that the revelation received by Paul from God, he preached. Alright? He received the revelation. So in verse 8 and 9, he preached. To me, the very least of all saints, the grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. I like the term for ages, has been hidden. Aren't you glad? But now, the secret that God sent Jesus to die for sins and to rise again is in order to create a new order, church of Jews and Gentiles on whom He could spend an eternity must be preached. But before that, you have to notice the Jews and Gentiles. We can also say, ang dati mong kaaway na neighbor mo, Ang dati mong kaaway na kamag-anak mo, ang dati mong kaaway. Now, you can be placed in one particular place, in one particular order, being in a local church. And this truth, Paul is saying to us, must be preached. The revelation, the third thing is that the revelation received by Paul from God, which he preached in verse 10 said, must be made known through the church. I guess, and I believe, not I'm guess. I mean, this is the ultimate intention of God. It was hidden for ages, but now, 
now to die in Australia. To die. This is the ultimate intention of God. You, the local churches, must preach this manifold wisdom that Christ, that God sent Christ to die, to create a new order, to have the Jewish people and the Gentiles to be one in Christ. Problem is, ano yung hadlang? What would hinder our churches and preachers to share the manifold wisdom of God to all creation? May I suggest some. One, timidity. The lack of boldness. Boldness is not having no dress or being shouty, alasigaw. That's not boldness. Boldness can be silent and can be loud, but you're telling the truth. Boldness is telling the truth. But there are many pastors, preachers, who are afraid to offend someone in public. They don't even preach giving in their own church. They invite other pastors. Pastor, you preach on giving, huh? so that my salary would increase. That's wrong. If you cannot preach the whole counsel of God, including tithes and offerings, get out of the ministry. Because you have to preach the whole counsel of God. Timidity. Lack of boldness. May I suggest another one? Tamadity. <laughs> Not digging much on the pearls found in the Bible, but shopping much to a do-it-yourself, feel-good, motivational speeches shop. So, for a man, the pastor won't preach about sin. There is something that is good for people. How to reduce weight. How to retain the hairs in your head. Those motivational things. Tamadity. There are also treachery. Making the gospel and the Bible truth insignificant or giving too little prominence so that it shall be lost in the multitude of other truths. The Bible says, ask and you will receive. Oh, nowadays, click and you will find. So click na lang yung mga pastor sa sermon.com, uh, preaching.com and copy and make their own preaching. Number four is terminology. There are available terms than what the Bible uses, so it creates confusion and aims for misunderstanding. We told our, our graduates, don't try to impress people. Love people. And so after graduation, some of the students will say, thank you for inviting me in this church. Have you received salvation? I guess so. Therefore, you will enter into the justification stage. And also, you have to wait for the glorification. All these terms, gublidigok, that the members don't understand, say, huh? That's why some members would say to the pastor, you know, pastor, you are greater than Einstein. And so the pastor, oh, really? And so that night, he texted the member, what do you mean, but I'm greater than Einstein? Well, you know, Einstein discovered something or say something. Only few people can understand Einstein. But you, Pastor, no one can understand you. <laughs> Terminology. And I can say, tranquility. Why these pastors? There are these pastors who prepare sermon to serve as tranquilizers suiting to the ears of the audience Sunday after Sunday. And siguro, regular ang love gift. Salamat, Pastor, sa sermon, ha? Hindi mo nababanggit ang adultery. Yeah. Tranquility. This is the reason why we probably do not preach the manifold wisdom of God. But the church is to make known the mystery of God, the wisdom of God, that Jesus was crucified for the unification and glorification. See, I use the terms terminology of Jews and Gentiles in the church. Every all, ika nga, ni Jimmy Santos. Local church, you have something to show to the principalities and powers 
You have to show the manifold wisdom which was revealed to you because it's no longer a secret. And the last, you have to show that the revealed plan is working in your church. Brothers and sisters, honestly, the essence is not informing those principalities and powers, but demonstrating the wisdom in God's mysterious plan. You see, kailan demonyohin nyo? Demon, demonstrating. Kaya nga nakared yung demonstrate. Huh? Hindi yung, hey, you know, uh, we have the manifold wisdom of God. Alam na nila yan. The devils know that. But the devils want to see if God's mysterious plan, which is sending Jesus Christ to die and to create a new order, a new church, is working in that church. And so he's whispering to the pastor, Pastor, why do you keep on preaching to these people? Tingnan mo yung tikod mo. May babae yan sa kabilang baryo. Tingnan mo yung asher mo. Dapat sa kamay ang hawak. Tingnan mo kung saan-saan humahawak. It is not working in the church. This is to demonstrate, not to inform. And we demonstrate the wisdom of God by showing in the church that it is working, it is operational, it is functioning. Let me share a little about my experience in University Baptist Church, Youth Life Student Center. When I returned from my doctor, doctoral studies, the mission pastor resigned. Take note, the mission pastor resigned. What are we going to do? Well, let's look for the new mission pastor so that we can do missions. No. We said, I've been in this church for more than seven years. So let's do what God wants to do, and that is mission. By the grace of God, we started another mission. The YLS2, UBC2, in Lagro. And the place was a former billiard hall. Parang pinarenta na kasi yung mga nagbibilyar, if they cannot pay yung natalo nila o nakatalo sa kanila, nagbabarila na. So natakot yung may-ari. And so, we found a place and make this at Youth Life Student Center. Now it is a church. And then we also planted, I, I think, medyo mali ako dito, it's a former garbage area. The YLC3, UBC3 in Santo Tomas, Batangas. We started a Youth Life Student Center and we had a church right now and it is now uh, gaining a lot of members, especially this YLC3. We also started YLC4, Youth Life Student Center for Mbinangonan, that is a former karaoke bar. What I'm saying here, we're saying to Satan, we're saying to the devil, hey, your favorite places before, we got it now. The local church have it now. And we are using your places to change people's lives because the manifold wisdom of God is working in this local church. And they think, what will Satan do? And he will look for other churches who are not doing what God intends them to do. Ito naman nga ang demonyohin ko. This is the idea. Brothers and sisters, we have to demonstrate. Since it's, it, it is an intergalactic in a mission, we have to send the signal to these heavenly places that our God is so wise in sending Jesus to create a church that will become one sending body. I mean, one unified body. Not one sending body. One unified body. Our God is so wise. He is victorious in His plan. We have to demonstrate that. And yes, your church through the church, not any organization in the world. Show that the manifold wisdom of God is working in your church. Eh, kaso itong madalas nag-work sa ating mga church, pagtungtong pa lang ni Pastor, pikita na. Tuluga na. Ano mangyari dyan? Oh, mas mahirap kung ganito mga miyembro nyo. Mga Kristyanak. 
These people are prophesying, pro professing that they are Christians. But they are not really the children of God. Hindi sila anak ng Diyos. Sila mga anak ni Janice. You're not working as a church. You're not functional. Show the manifold wisdom of God and demonstrate to the allies of Satan by the way we live that God's plan is not failing. That's why it was Francis of Assisi who said, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. Our lives must be the number one testimony signaling that to the heavenly places. The church is following the intention of God. Their God is wise. Their God is wise. Their God is wise. Their God is stupid. Their God is stupid. Their God is stupid. God becomes stupid because the local churches are not functional to the intent of God. We are Southern Baptists, not maintenance Baptist churches. We have to realize that we have a mission. And if we cannot maintain the unity of the Spirit, which, which means to me, hand in hand for global missions, let us be aware that there must be no territorial in terms of doing missions. If somebody comes from Luzon to Mindanao, be hospitable to them. If Mindanao people come to Visaya, be hospitable to them. If the Visayas will go to Luzon, be hospitable to them. Especially if they are working to proclaim the manifold wisdom of God. Through the church, yes, small, medium, or large churches, as long as you are purchased by the blood of Jesus, you must go hand in hand through the church. It was His intent. And brothers and sisters, there is no other option. Our heavenly brother, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, challenge our churches to show to the allies of Satan that our God is wise because of His manifold wisdom, His wonderful plan. Bless us in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you.